All right, we're live. We're going online and uh, welcome everybody. And uh, this little spontaneous courtrooms pop up talks. Uh, I have something stirring in my spirit or something. It's just a spontaneous uh, meeting. And uh, I don't care about numbers. I just care about, you know, uh, helping folks. But tonight, uh, I was looking at, I, I see numbers a lot. I don't know if you do, but I do. And uh, when I started uh, expecting to see numbers by faith, I began to see them. And so what had happened was in my first courtrooms of heaven, full intensive training with Grant Mahoney and Samantha Mahoney at Lake Tahoe, he used, he used numbers as a, a word of knowledge and he activated us in, in the numbers. Oh, not really. I activated myself because I knew that if he can do it, God's no respecter of persons, I can receive numbers as well. So how many of you see numbers when you're, uh, your daily life? And I'm going to show you how there's something will help you in your courtrooms of heaven or in your daily life when you're ministering to people, when you, you can use them as a word of knowledge for somebody. And what we tend to do, first of all, is go to a, a book or a website that has an interpretation of numbers. But I'm going to show you a little bit different way. This is not uh, the only way, uh, the, the books that you use, the biblical interpretation books and numbers, uh, are, are all good and well, but I want to show you a different way that I learned from Grant Mahoney. And so, uh, uh, we'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, looks like we have plenty here. Uh, I want to introduce you to my head intercessor down in the bottom there at Squirrely Davidson. He's praying for you all to be activated in the spirit realm. He's my little squirrel buddy down the bottom. So he says, hey, you might not hear him, but he's with us. And I'm just having fun tonight. Anyway, uh, how many of you are a seer? Maybe a couple of you don't know. Well, let me tell you, we all are. We all are seers. We all have the ability to see. And I don't really like that word because out of the old church age, what had happened was we had to go to a conference and have a seer lay hand on, on us and impart that gift to us. Uh, today, we don't necessarily have to do that. It's still valid. It's still good. I'm not taken away from the seer's ministry. But if we're operating in the fullness or beginning to operate in the kingdom in the fullness of as he is so are we in this world, we should be sensing, we should be hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, and sensing all the things that are going on around us in the spirit realm. Right? So when he shared with us, he was just using numbers for a word of knowledge in our training. And I'm kind of helping people get in, in the group here. And so what had happened was, I said, basically, I said, God's no respecter person again. Uh, I can do that just by faith, engaging that by faith. So that's what I want you to do tonight. Engage, being able to sense, see numbers, uh, even if you don't now. Everything, the currency of heaven is what? Faith. Uh, in the old church age, we said, you know, I'm waiting and contending to, or pressing in or tearing for this or that to happen. And, and the church age changed to a position of uh, engaging by stepping in by faith. So I'm going to give you a scripture that that's key that I teach everywhere I go in uh, the, the uh, intenses I teach on. I always mention this. I, I ask people to raise their hand. Who wants to see your anointing? And you know, 95% of the people will raise their hands. I say, well, I'm not going to lay hands on you. I'm going to give you this scripture and you just gonna, uh, need to begin to step into that scripture by faith and activate yourself. So here's the scripture. It's John five verse 20. And it says for the father loves the son 
How many of you are sons? We all are. And so if we are, this implies there is a personal intimate relationship uh, that you know that the Father loves you. How many of you know the Father loves you? Awesome. Amen. As a son, not as a slave or, or a servant, but as a son. And so it goes on to say, for the father loves the son and shows him all that he himself is doing and greater works than these will he show him so that you may marvel. Isn't that interesting? It says, I show you all things. And all of a sudden the next sentence says, I'm going to show you even greater things. Well, what's greater than all things? I have no idea, but I sure would like to find out. I would like to see those things, wouldn't you? And so there's the scripture that you can just engage in that by faith. Step into that scripture. Activate yourself right now. And say, Father, we just step into that scripture now. And all of a sudden, I'm activating my hearing, my seeing, my tasting, my touching, and my smell, my sensing of everything that's going on around me. Your word says and promises me that you'll show me everything and even greater things than these so that I will marvel. And so there I am. And, and I'm, I'm in it. I'm just, I'm just in him. I live and move and have my being. So there's your activation initially for, for the ability to sense uh, uh, the things we're going to be talking about. Uh, do, 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 do. I sense, Darling says, I sense, but I'm seeing more and more. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. If you step into that scripture, it's an accelerator to the manifestation. So you're going to begin to see, even if you couldn't see, you're going to begin to dream and have visions like never before. You're going to, you're just going to start being uh, sensitive to things around you that speaks through everything. And so you're going to begin to see things. Uh, I like the word sensing again, better than what we have up to this point in time. Now using numbers in our everyday experience and courtrooms of heaven, I know a lot of you may be sensing numbers or, or, or see numbers in your dreams. And we want to rush to a, a prophet or a seer to help us understand uh, more about what the books are saying, what the number is talking about. That's good and wonderful. Do that. That's an additional tool you can use, but I'm going to use Strong's concordance. How about that? And so uh, what I'm going to do, I just want to challenge you tonight. Hear God for a number, and we'll look it up. I'll show you how I do it. It's not hard. If I can do it, if Grant and Sam Mahoney uh, do it, I can do it. I can activate myself uh, to begin to receive uh, words, numbers, colors, uh, smells, sensations, Anything God can use, he can speak through us, anything. So when I say see ability, you know, we talk sometimes about the seeing our blueprint, seeing our scroll. And you know what everybody thinks, it's a visible thing. But seeing is not just a visible experience. It's with all the senses. And I want to show you just a, a, a quick uh, uh, screen share that I pulled up. This is a... Uh, this is a picture from uh, Ian Clayton initially. Mike Parsons uh, teaches a lot about it. This is from Mike Parsons' website. But you see in that three circles, spirit, soul, and body. Uh, and you see the outer gates, the eye gate, the nose gate, the ear gate, the mouth gate, and the feeling gate. Those are all the five senses that we're used to seeing or sensing things uh, not only in the spiritual realm, but the natural. And some of us are so consumed by worldly things, that's the only way we're driven and the only way we, we see things. We're not activated by using uh, the sensory realm from the glory of God, you see in the middle, out of the gateway of first love. So in essence, everything should flow from from the glory of God, from the gate of first love in the very center, out to the spirit, out to the soul, out to the body that controls or, or directs and leads us rather than 
from the outward senses. Now, God can use the outward senses just as much as uh, uh, anything. But in this particular situation, we have 21 gateways of the spirit, soul, and body in that diagram. And any one of those gateways can be blocked. Uh, Mike Parsons, Ian Clayton says, actually, there's a dragon probably sitting on a few of those gateways within our spirit and our soul and our body. Let me back up just a minute. Operating out of the glory of God, affecting the spirit, then flow into the soul, then to the body is divine order. Some of us may have that order out of whack. Maybe we're led by the mind, or our thoughts are consuming us. And so the spirit is shut down and the glory of God is shut down. Some of us are led by the body, just those five senses. If that's true, and I have been in the same situation, that, uh, that I need to go into the courtrooms of heaven to clear open those gates. Let me get some people back on here. Uh, there's some people in the waiting room. Okay, so I need to clear, take myself to the courts. Uh, Psalms 139, 23, and 24. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Try me in the courtrooms of heaven. Uh, see, uh, know my anxieties. That would be out of the soulless realm. Uh, see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So we want to see, uh, sit under the, the government of the kingdom of heaven in the court system, the judicial justice system of, of the courts to discover Yahweh and where our gates are blocked. One of mine was intuition. One of mine was, was uh, the fear of God uh, around the spirit. One of mine was reverence. And so I had to open up those gateways through repentance and course to, to, to take away that legal bondage or where that gateway has been closed in my life. Conscious in the, in the uh, soul realm, reason, imagination. Talk to Christopher Carter about that one. You'll find out some things. Uh, emotions. You know, men are, are terrible about showing no emotions. And so that gateway is probably blocked to the, to the divine flow from the glory of God to, to affect our whole life. Our choices and our wills uh, are, are involved there. But, but uh, we need to, to move from, you know, the body up at the top there. It shows uh, a world conscious uh, uh, level. Uh, many of us are trapped in that, uh, uh, level, uh, in the soul, there's a self-conscious realm with all the conscious, the reason, the imagination, emotion, so forth and so on. Uh, see, and then the, the, uh, God conscious consciousness comes from the glory of God out of the gateway of first love. So let's go back there and, um, and move back here. People are still coming. Uh, so uh, let's see, where am I? So we're going back to John 5:20. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all himself is doing, and greater works than these will he ma will he show him so that you may marvel. He didn't limit that to a seer prophet. He didn't limit that to an apostle or a prophet or a pastor, or evangelist or teacher. He said a son. A son is able, he'll show a son all he is doing and even greater things so that you may marvel. That's pretty amazing to me. We need to begin to step into uh, allowing Yahweh to mature us into that full measure of the statue of Jesus Christ, which Ephesians 4 verse 13 talks about. And then through that relationship, we'll begin to see more and more and more and more as we engage by faith uh, with the Father. And so back to the numbers, I know a lot of you see numbers. Maybe you have dreams with numbers in them and you want to look in the books to try to figure out uh, what the meaning is. That's good. I've done that too. I still do it. And so I'm not going to say don't do that, but I want to show you something uh, let's see. I use my phone and what I do, maybe I can show you here. I go to my Google search. I tell you what started this today. You may not be able to see that. 
No. Yeah, I'll, I'll just tell you. What I was searching today, I said, you know, I see these numbers. They use numbers in the courtrooms of heaven. I just, I just train myself. And a lot of times it's just a little quick flash sense of a number. And I'll go up and look at it in Strong's and Coordinates using my phone. And I'll find out how significant it is when I see a number. Sometimes it doesn't fit, but most of the time it does. It's right in order of what God is doing in that particular court case. So what I do, I'm going to put in the comments. I'll go, I'll type into Google search in my phone, Strong's Concordance. I'm going to use my birthday. Well, I'll show you more about that. Or here's what I did today. Strong Concordance. 2020. I wanted to see what 2020, what Strong's Concordance says out of 2020, and I was amazed. I use this all the time in the court sessions, and so I wanted to see, let's see, there it is. 605 is my birthday, and 2020 is, is the year we're in. So now what I did was, let me get back to it. I hit enter, and Google search Strong's Concordance 2020. And the Greek means to let shine, to dawn. And even more, it's, uh, I didn't look up the scriptures related to that, but I did for the next one. I did for the Greek. It's talking about the Sabbath the dawn the dawn of a of a new day of a of a new beginning to let shine a, a new dawn on our lives so i think there's a message of 2020 what god's got in store for 2020 through uh this revelation now the hebrew word was even more important the hebrew word for 2020 is H-A-T-S-T-S-A-L-A-H, and it means deliverance. And it's referencing Esther 4.14. If somebody wants to look that up, it talks about relief and deliverance will arise. How about that? I think Yahweh has a, a plan for, for deliverance out of, out of uh, worldly church age systems and bringing us into a new day of delivering us into to uh, uh, maybe I have a lack for words true spirituality without the religious traditions of man that God's going to begin to awaken us to begin to experience. So I think it's a wonderful time. I tend to look at I've had a really amazing time. And through this coronavirus thing, I've been restructuring things. Everything I've done has been a marvelous, wonderful time for me. Everything has changed. And so what has happened was uh, when I get uh, numbers, what I'll do is somebody give me a number. Did you try it yet? Somebody give me a number. What are you sensing right now? This first one. 1111. 1111. I'll type in Strong's Concordance in my Google search. Are you doing it too? Yeah. Okay, I want you all to practice. In the, the, the Greek, it means to mutter or murmur. When I do that, you're going to get both. I don't know if you can see that. You're going to get both the Greek. See the Greek there in the Hebrew? You're going to get both of them there. So you can tap on each one of them. The Greek means to mutter and to murmur, to grumble, just be discontent. And the Hebrew means devastator. So what did you, what did you feel when you sensed that, that number? Uh, did you sense anything with 1111? Or you just, you just believe you heard or sensed that word, that number? I saw it earlier. <clears throat> I saw the numbers 1111 earlier. I saw it on a physical on my cell, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Did you mean 
to see that way or to see yeah yeah i mean it's just oh. up to the sensor who senses whatever you know so what i would take out of that for use in the courts would be the devastator he, the Lord is identifying there's a devastator there that's murmuring and muttering uh, uh, things to enter that case, which is an injustice, right? So we would deal with that issue within ourselves. We would re first repent, remove the log out of our own eyes. So we would repent for any time we've been muttering and complaining, murmuring, any time when we've partnered with the accuser or that devastator, we have to repent for our, our own personal sins and transgressions and generational bloodline iniquity. So there's a huge tool that you can use just, just out of uh, 1111. Amen. 414 for the, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise. And so I think, you know, we can sense that, put that together. I mean, just an example of how I would, how I would use that, put 1111 together with, with Esther 14. Now, if we were in a court case tonight, maybe we are and don't even know it. We would say, okay, 1111, there's murmuring, complaining. Uh, uh, and uh, if we remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. And so, you know, we can kind of combine those two. I'm just using this as an example, what we could use. Uh, there's a lot of different things, a lot of different facets of revelation God can bring into the picture with a particular number. This is just an example. And so uh, thank you, uh, Kim, for posting that. So anyway, uh, let's do another one. Who's sensing something, something else, some other number? I just want to activate you. If you just hear a quick flash of a number, look it up. I just want to take one more and we'll, we'll do that. Who's got a number? I've been sensing 19. 19, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go back to my Google search. That's why I like to keep my phone with me when I'm doing court cases. If I see, sense a color or a smell or a sensation or an angel or a cloud of witness coming into the courtrooms of heaven, I want to be able to have, have my Google search up so I can find out names, so I can find out uh, you know, maybe a history, maybe what that color is signifying. You know, each one of the seven spirits of God are a different color. And so let me go to 19, just kind of helping you to be more sensitive to things around you. Uh, 19 is talking about slaughter in the Hebrew and goodness in the Greek. So you'd have to really go. That's why I want my phone so I can look at the whole definition and see what it's really talking about and try to apply it to my, uh, let Holy Spirit apply it to, to whatever we're dealing with in the courtrooms of heaven. It's just that easy. You know, when I first started and still when I do, I just has the slightest thought of a number. And most of the time I would disregard it. I said, well, that's just my thoughts. Well, you need to stop just a minute and look that number up because maybe it has some significance, uh, uh, for your particular court case or as a word of knowledge, whoever you're ministering to or in a dream revelation for you that you need uh, to interpret that dream. Isn't it cool? Now, uh, let's see. That's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I want to share something with you that gets kind of fun. And uh, you guys are going to have fun with this. Usually I wait till the end of this particular part of an activation to start looking up our birthdays because everybody gets gone on their phone. They won't hear a thing I say. And it's just go, it's crazy because when you look up your birthday, it's, it's God does nothing without significance. And let me show you what my, my birthday is, is June 5. So I look up, I punch in Google strong and coordinates 605 and it describes my ministry. Let me, in the Greek, it talks about, uh, apocastasis is the Greek word. The definition is restoration 
restitution, reestablishment, and restoration. It goes on to say that word talks about uh, the restoration not only of the true theocracy, but also of that more perfect state of even physical things which existed before the fall as in Acts 3.21. Isn't that interesting? That's my birthday. And then when I look up my year, that's just my month and day, 6.05, June 05. You know, you're not going to have 0605. You're going to have June 05. And so when I look a little further, you know, keep looking within that, Oh, wait a minute. I'm missing something here. But you got the idea. The restoration not only of truth. I mean, that's the whole purpose of the courtrooms of heaven, the restoration of all things, if things have been stolen from us. And that's that's pretty much what I do throughout my whole ministry. And so if you want to look up at your birthday, just take a moment and and if you got your phone, go you Google search Strong's Concordance, then put in the number. It should pull up both the Greek and the Hebrew. And tell me what you get. Okay, Andrea, what are you you're laughing? <laughs> what do you get? Okay. Um, in Hebrew, I got Aleph. Or like, yeah, Aleph. Mm-hmm. Um. And that means a thousand. I don't know what that means, but that's the first one. But uh, I related with Aleph, the letter, because mm-hmm. I have been asking God, um, what is my name in heaven? And the first letter I got is Aleph. And actually, my mom gave me an Aleph um, really? pendant. But the other one is really bad. Yeah, well, The mine- other one in Greek... Uh, if um, under God's arrangement mm-hmm. or not sub- submissive and disobedient. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I was laughing. It's like, what? Yeah, not necessarily bad. We have to look at it and ask Yahweh. We have to inquire of the Lord what it means because my, my uh, 605 in the Hebrew is desperately sick, incurable, or woeful that was my state before i came into jesus and so i look look at it like boy that sounds bad but it was really my state of being before i came to the lord the rest is um god's plan authority and attitude towards duly appointed but i'm really like if you say it like that, I'm not submissive with the enemy a lot. So that's the area that I can relate. Yeah, yeah. It's not always a hundred percent accurate, but it's pretty pretty interesting what you might find. And then you go into asking the Lord, Well, what I have a I have an earthly mentality and I, I wanna know your perspective on these these this uh, number that I was born under this this particular day then you can go into your your birth year you can go into your hebraic date when you were you were born the hebrew uh date and you can take it deeper and deeper if you want to i've gone a little bit in there anybody else have another one that's kind of interesting don't be discouraged if you see something that looks a little negative like mine desperately sick <laughs> like oh man hey, that's um, a- um in greek uh they have me as slackness slow and i'm to me i'm not <laughs> mm-hmm. and um and in hebrew an inhabitant of bethlehem uh b-e-t-h bet mm-hmm. oh, okay that's pretty interesting yes it's like yeah. a house a dwelling place yeah yeah it could be your whole process of your your life up into this point i just i just think different things yeah when, when something sounds i'm gonna definitely take that slackness <laughs> yeah and hey, that, that slowness was, into court yeah. yeah that was me too <laughs> and probably my generational bloodline so you can use yeah it's revealed uh, I with, will. 
within the words, the numbers that you get. I have a question. Sure. Um, in Canada, we use our our birth or the the day of birth, like the twenty fifth of December. Mm -hmm. So I would use twenty five twelve, not twelve twenty five. So I would use the day of my birth, which is twenty five, the month, which is twelve, because you guys go, you guys go uh, month and day, whereas we go day and month. So I would go according to our country, my country. Yeah, okay. There's that, no, there's no wrong that? way. I'm just, yeah, I'm just giving you. So yeah, try that and see what you get. <laughs> and then when you get kind of experienced with looking up numbers, you can start with colors, smells are all significant. Everything we experience in a court, everything is significant in what our life and what we experience. If we discover the eternal and everything we experience in this world, in this, in the spirit realm, we'll begin to, to get a more pic, greater picture of what, what Yahweh is doing uh, in our lives. So yeah, do you have that, Darlene? Yes, um, Strong's Concordance is um, smooth in Hebrew, and it's um, it the the scripture it gives is Samuel seventeen forty. Smooth ones of among stones, smooth says mm -hmm. is, so, that, is that smooth. significant to you what does that mean to you for he himself five smooth stones well um a stone is also a rock which to me um uh, means strength and solidness mm -hmm. yeah amen Amen. Yeah, some of these, when you start looking up, you have to really seek the Lord for his interpretation rather than what we first think. Because a lot of times we'll be wrong. A lot of times we'll be right. So I just have to ask myself questions or explore some different uh, options of what that word could mean. And then all of a sudden the Lord will breathe life into it and give me the true interpretation, just like interpreting a dream. And so it's pretty awesome. Uh, let me go back to the screen share once again. Now we'll look up that again. Can you guys see that pretty good? That's kind of hard to read a little bit. Uh, once we begin to open those gateways, the byproduct of that is to begin to to sense what God is doing and to see more of all that he is doing that he'll show you and greater works than these so that you may marvel. So there may be some things in there. You can find this chart uh, just by searching gateways of the spirit, Mike Parsons, gateways of the spirit, Mike Parsons. And just do a Google search. You'll come to that, that picture there. Uh, so you can see real quick where, where, what gateways have been shut down by the enemy and where you need to, to litigate in the court, legislate in the courts so that you can begin to find uh, which gates are closed and which gates are open. Like me, a fear of God was definitely one. Uh, my intuition, you know, we're told in the world, oh, that's crazy imagination. Uh, that's one of the gateways too. Well, more of an imagination. That was pretty much shut down. And my emotions, my emotions were set. I came from, my dad was non-emotional and I never, never saw him get mad. I know, never saw him express any form of love and uh, for my mother. Uh, I just thought things were happily ever, ever after. And when I got married and boy, was I wrong. It was like, Oh, <laughs> and so I didn't know how to deal with relationship. Those gateways were closed down and now they're open more 
than ever, I still would think there's probably some things that need to be opened up uh, in a greater way uh, for myself too. Uh, you know, there's there's things that I can maybe see that that you know even my my nose gate. You know, as I, I didn't have a sense of smell much growing up. Now I, you know, since I've been uh, in the courtrooms of heaven dealing with my own personal sins and my generational bloodline iniquities, I can sense, I can smell better than I ever could. I can see better. Uh, my eye gate. I used to wear glasses. I don't have, I couldn't pass a driver's test. So now I, I'm able to pass a driver's test without using glasses. And so I accredit a lot of that to, to cleansing my gates, removing the, uh, uh, almost the, the uh, uh, cleansing of my DNA, cleansing of my generational bloodline iniquities using this, this uh, chart. And things start to open up for you. And you go, wow, that was really cool how that happened. I didn't expect that. Uh, cause I didn't go to the courts for my vision. It just became a thing about, about me becoming a co-creator and seeking the Lord. Uh, where am I, where are my mindsets? Where are my motives in my heart? Where are my actions, my physical actions? Where are my, my words that come out of my mouth? So I begin to, to shape my, those things, my, my, the words that came out of my mouth to be a co-creator, to speak to those things that are not as though they were, become a co-creator with him, uh, change my uh, physical actions, uh, uh, ask, seek the Lord in Psalm, uh, Psalm 139, 23, and 24, search me, O God, uh, in all these different areas, and uh, put myself on trial. Uh, Mike Parsons actually says that we need to sit under the judgment seat of the Lord. That's kind of scary thought, right? Who wants to do that? Because we think judgment is scary. We think lightning bolts and fire and brimstone, we're going to be slaughtered. But God's love is judgment. It, judgment basically says he's making a decision. And so what we're learning is to be open to come to his into his justice system to have him search ourselves individually in each one of those gateways so that we can come into the fullness of where he would show us everything. Now, showing is just not only visible. It's the manifestation of those things as well. Like my vision, uh, uh, he, he showed me a pathway. I could see a pathway. I could understand the pathway, which for me was speaking those things that are not as though they were maybe something different for you, but I began to see the pathway and he began to show me the manifestation. Now I can see better than ever. And I don't have to wear glasses at all. Let me see. Somebody's waiting to get in here. So does that help? You can get that chart for me and read about his articles more on that as we, as you go over, uh, that particular uh, issue. It'll open up things for you in an amazing way. And you'll begin to see, hear, taste, touch, and smell uh, things more powerfully. Uh, also, 1109, an expert, one who knows. I think that's some pretty powerful destiny for you, <laughs> don't you? Uh, an expert, one who knows. That's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. So does anybody have any comments? Have looked up any numbers You're about your birthday? Let's just, let's just, let's just talk here. That's what this is all about. Um, I have a question. How do you, um, how do you find colors? Like if you're seeing a color or you have, you, you smell something, how do you um, look that up? I might say the spiritual significance of blue. If I know it's one of the colors of the, the seven spirits of God, I'll look at the, I'll go Google search. I, I love Google. Uh, uh, seven colors, uh, the colors of the seven spirits of God. They all have a specific uh, color that are related to, to them. Everything is significant. If we begin to Google, Google is my best friend. A lot of times, if I, if I, if, if I sense something, I'm there on the phone. I'm a researcher. 
I want to find out what, what does that particular color mean? What is that particular smell, especially in the courts of heaven? We, we uh, haven't had, had it happen in a long time, but we used to have an aroma come into the room. And just about every time we did a court case and everybody would smell it. And we go, okay, we need to do, we need to do some searching here. Uh, we need to find out what that aroma is, what does it smell like, and what it represents. It's just not a coincidence that an aroma shows up. It's not a coincidence, coincidence that an angel shows up. What I say about angels is, all right, let's just, uh, I know some of you may see angels. I don't get too excited when somebody sees an angel when you go in and do some research, what that angel is about, because that angel is there to present evidence on your behalf, be a witness on your behalf in the courts and in your life. So I want to know what that angel's name is and why that angel is there, especially in the courts of heaven. Cloud of witnesses. I might hear the name Fred, you know, who is Fred? You know, maybe it's one of your relatives that's in the cloud. So we need to know what the, what's the story about Fred. What is Fred all about? A lot of times we've had some of the patriarchs like Enoch and Abraham and uh, Adam come into the courts for a particular reason. We just go, oh, Adam's here. Well, dive in a little deeper and find out why Adam is appearing in your courtroom uh, case that you're there. They're, they are there. Let me show you about Hebrews 11.39 talks about the courts and why, uh, why there are, uh, they are eager to participate in our courtroom uh, cases. Hebrews 11.39 and 40 says this. All these, this is the, the uh, Hall of Fame of Faith. All these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, verse 40, since God had provided something better for us. Here's the thing, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. So if you have somebody from the cloud showing up in your courtroom of heaven, uh, they are there for a purpose. They have vested interest and what you are doing in the court cases. So pay attention. They have vested interest. Does that make sense? You know, and a lot of people will go, well, is that necromancy? Well, no, they're not dead. They're just in a different dimension. Why, if, if, why would Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration have, have Moses and Elijah appear if he was operating in necromancy? He wasn't. He was showing us an example that we can use the cloud of witnesses just as he did on the Mount of Transfiguration. You know, the, 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 the church age will tell you that's wrong to engage with. Uh, you're, you're operating under, with uh, familiar spirits or whatever. Well, no, if you're in the courts with the blood of Jesus, uh, you're covered. And these uh, 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 cloud of witness people are going to begin to show up in your court cases to, to help you through the case. They are there to witness. They are there to provide evidence. They're there to, to, to not only to serve you in your court case, but that they would be made perfect in that experience. So they have a vested interest in what you are doing. So uh, I hope through this that you'll begin to sense more in your everyday life, sense more in your your ministry to other people if you get numbers or you see colors or strong concord numbers use strong concordance numbers if you're in the courtrooms of heaven put it all together and and don't rush through a court case take some time to begin to to pay attention to be sensitive to what's what's god is revealing to you in that court case our tendency is kind of like oh that was just a that was just a thought. Well, back up just a minute. Maybe it wasn't. Do a little research with it and find out why. Why are you sensing what you're sensing? Because you've come into the courtrooms of heaven. All of a sudden, everything in heaven is alive. Everything on the earth is alive. Has you know is frequency related? Has as 
uh, influence in what we're doing and wants to want you to uh, begin to pay attention. So this will enhance your uh, courtrooms of heaven case uh, uh, greatly. Okay, uh, let's see. Hata, your birth date is 123. So look up 123. Then you can look up on 1946. Oh, one, or just 123. Let's do that. Let's help her out a little bit. Take strong concordance. You came in a little earlier or late. Type in your Google search on your phone. You're going to type in Google. I mean, excuse me. <laughs> strong, <laughs> good, strong concordance. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I'm, um, I need some uh, cloud of witness help. Type in Strong's Concordance, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you're going to get both the Greek probably first. It means the seashore. And Hebrew means the name of a condiment. You know, seek the Lord for revelation on that. Sometimes it means absolutely nothing. Sometimes after a little search in the Lord, uh, he will reveal to you what it really means because you were born on a significant date. Uh, on purpose, for God's purpose, and for God's divine plan. Just like my birthday, 605, restoration, the restoration of the messianic kingdom. Back to the uh, days before the fall. <laughs> so It's pretty amazing. Just start using it. There you go. Thank you, Darlene. Thank you. Just begin to practice that. You know, we exercise our spiritual senses by reason of use, so you can, the more you use it, the more sensitive you'll become to, to using numbers, colors, smells, uh, engaging the angelic realm, engaging cloud of witnesses, engaging uh, uh, creation, you know, heaven and earth will witness, Deuteronomy says, heaven and earth will bear witness against you, and so anything can be used by God to help you in your uh, daily life and in your courtrooms of having experience. I love to do court cases outdoors because I can see, you know, maybe there's a, you know, we were doing one in Palm Springs, California, sitting outside in a, in a, in a park and here comes this truck. I don't remember what it said on there, but uh, the uh, truck said something on it that we could use pertaining to our courts case. It was about the city of, of Palm Springs, California. Here comes this truck, gives us a sign that we can use in our courtroom of heaven. It was right next door to a school, and the kids were all singing this one particular song. So he said, okay, that's God speaking to us, that we can use that song as a testimony to present in the courtroom of heaven. It was a joyous, happy song, and uh, that's how that came. All right, what'd you get, Marcy? Is she there? Is she going to tell us? Second, so I, can, I got it. Hold on just a second. Okay. Um, 1224 in the strong says to cross, pass through, to step across. Step across. Okay. And come over. Are you ha aren't you happening to be doing that right now? Aren't we? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> coming out of the old church age stuff yes. Yes, yes, yes you were yes. born to cross over yes i'm doing a lot of uh doing a lot of high stepping <laughs> yeah. crossing over yeah yeah, yeah. We are. it's so good it's so good i hit a i hit a point of delay um as some of y'all may have done maybe not your further ahead than i am but um whatever that means right um but I got involved with a church locally and um, it turned into to be a, a big drain, mm -hmm. a real drain. And um, so I think that season's going to be up. For yeah, good. good. Just cross yeah. over. There's some, there are, there's some definitely some crossing over oh. passing through. So that really, really helps me to know that. Yeah, amazing. Well, I got to begin to show you. Andrew, I believe, had a question. 
Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm really new in this journey. Like God has been pushing me through this. But lately I have been sensing like three uh, entities or three people or three <laughs> things in my room. And somebody uh, told me to ask them their names. So when they when I asked them, um, they told me that it was Enoch, Moshe, and Elijah. Yeah, wow. So I don't know where to go next with this. So I don't know if that had to do with the court of heaven or governors or yeah, because probably. they were there in my room like for three days. And I don't know. Sorry if I'm going off the, <laughs> the thing, uh, but I'm real kind of curious about that. Yeah, well, you're in a good position because you haven't grown up in the church age so much and you can just jump right in with all those traditions of men that make the power of God no effect. Uh, but Enoch is hugely important in today. Uh, uh, I have encounters with Enoch. I actually teach Enoch flight school about the keys of Enoch that, that gained him so much favor with, with God that he skipped death. And it's all about righteousness, holiness, and purity, and things like that. And so, you know, uh, uh, you might want to go join Enoch Flight School. It's one of my groups on Facebook. Uh, there's some uh, uh, webinars that I've recorded, some teachings, four or five part teachings about Enoch and the keys that, that he, he was called the scribe of righteousness. He taught his children he taught his family he taught his followers he had a had a following of eight hundred thousand people and he taught him about righteousness this is from the book of enoch and so uh, uh i i look at those things and i'm gaining i want to find what did enoch do that, that he gained so much favor because he was a prototype of of man uh that you and i can follow the keys that he knew about and that he understood that caused him to step into immortality. That's an, that's an interesting study all in itself. Uh, just for an example, John 3.16, we all know that, right? There's a message immortality in John 3.16. For God so loved, and we just missed it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And we think we have to die to encounter heaven. And that's not the truth. He wants us to experience heaven right here. So Enoch is huge. Um, Moses, I mean, he was one who led people. I mean, he was, he was a major, major influence of what we need out of the Torah. He wrote the five books of Torah. Uh, the Hebraic sages say that the creation was built on the Torah. The Torah, actually, they believe the Torah became the foundation of all creation. So there's some keys other than in the first five books of the Bible that we need to read that carefully. What are the keys of creation that we can incorporate in our own life to begin to be a co-creator with Yahweh? So well, who was the other one? The other one was Elijah. Elijah, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Awesome, awesome, prophetic. And so not that, you know, I, 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 I believe that we all can see, John 5, 20, uh, we all can function in the prophetic, we all can prophesy, but it's more about a living, living a prophetic lifestyle of, rather than prophesying to people, living as an example to the rest of the body of Christ, who we really are as we live in him, move in him, and have our being, we're going to be manifesting and demonstrating who he is. As he is so in this world. Well, that's the goal. I think that's God's greatest prophetic word to mankind, that we have the potential, uh, well, maybe for you in the beginning, studying Enoch, uh, Moses, and Elijah, and coming into that place where you can, you can fulfill that that great promise God has for all of us. So that's awesome. Awesome. Uh, you know, what I would do with those, uh, what we honor, we attract. So I would engage more with them. I just speak to them and say, hey, I honor 
I honor you, Elijah. Thank you for everything you're doing in my life. I don't understand it all, but I want to know more. One thing about Enoch in the book of Enoch, he said, he asked God, I said, he said, uh, show me all things, show me everything. And God did. Why? Because he was a man of righteousness, holiness, and purity and honor. And so begin to engage them. Even if you don't sense them around, be thankful for them. Thank you for, for, for hanging around me. Thank you for the visitations. Thank you for what you're imparting to me, whether you, uh, you know, Enoch is around me just about all the time. I don't see him. I don't sense him, but I just, I just know he is. And I believe what he was sent to, to mentor me in the realms of the supernatural. And so I don't sense him being around me that much, but I know he is by faith. And I, I say, Enoch, man, I thank you. I honor you for being sent here to, to mentor me and move me into position so that I can fulfill 1 John four seventeen as he is, so are we in this world. So that's amazing. Just begin to engage them by faith and, and you'll have a lifelong, uh, uh, journey with with those three guys <laughs> it's gonna be fun for you thank Anybody you very else? much no you're welcome you're welcome anybody else have something well we good i think that's all i had to cover tonight and uh yeah yeah that's enough so just practice 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 uh engaging moving with them moving by faith with them and your 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 journey exploring uh with numbers and colors and and whatever you 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 begin to sense i i just pay attention to everything you know i know god speaks through everything and everything when my mentor told me Years ago, he said, Terry, everything is significant. He actually said, Terry, I want you to throw everything you've known up to this point. This was when I was fairly young in the Lord. Throw everything you know about God in the trash can. I go, what? Really? He said, yeah. Everything is significant. Let God speak to you through everything. Let him form uh, your belief systems. Let him form your mindset. Let him form your your physical actions, let him form the words that come out of your mouth and watch what he'll do. It's radically changed my life. I'm not perfect in it by any means, but it's been quite a journey uh, as I've come away with him. Let's see, somebody said something here that was cool, looked like. Uh, there's, there, that's a Google search. How do we know the colors of the seven spirits? Uh, Google search. There's some ministries uh, that that dive into that, uh, that that's probably available on Google. Uh, I have an assigned angel to guard over my house and God gave me the numbers of angels, 24 angels on every four sides. Wow. That's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. You know, I, uh, one, one scripture that's been a key for me is, is, uh, I don't remember the, the address of it, but, uh, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search it out. So as we begin to search things out, he'll bring your own revelation. He'll add to what you've learned tonight. And, uh, and through engaging by faith, he'll add to that. You'll begin to see more. You begin to hear more, taste, smell. And you'll open up those 21 gateways of the spirit, soul, and body. And everything will become alive to you. Uh, I had a one court case that I did was uh, uh, I was in my room one night and uh, let's see, how'd that go? Uh, I saw a vision of scrolls being coming out of heaven, but it was, it was dark. It wasn't really a good thing, but there was hundreds of scrolls coming out of heaven and towards me. And I knew it was dark and I knew it wasn't really a good thing. So, I had to search God. I had to, uh, you know, dive in deeper. That was all the vision was. So uh, what he said to me, he said, Terry, these are constitutions 
or you know the constitution of america is the binding law of every law written and so he said these are constitutions that you have created out of your own mindsets out of your own belief systems out of your own uh motives in your heart out of your own physical actions and out of the words that have come out of your mouth how many of you know our words are creative, both for darkness and both for evil. But I was creating all these constitutions and the way it looked like was in a, in a following vision he gave me. I saw these invisible structures like glass, rectangular structures of different sizes above me, through me. They passed through me all on my sides. I was locked in these glass structures that were limitations, restrictions and bondages and tethers to my own constitutions that I have created. Now, some of those are good. Some of those things were uh, old age things that, that were good in the time God was doing that. But I had to, to through the courts, I began to repent for, for all those things. And then those, those structures began to just pop. And I all of a sudden noticed, man, I'm free. I'm free from all those constitutions, but they were constitution or binding laws that I created myself. And so a lot of them are related to, to that screen share, that chart that I showed you. A lot of those constitutions that I created myself were all related to that right there. Every one of them. And maybe a lot of them were a move of God in the past. It was not a move of God today. And what do you say? The religious traditions of men make the power of God or the word of God of no effect. So I had a lot of things in there that created these mindsets, created these imaginations, the reason and the logic that I thought was my choices in my will. All of a sudden my will became in a lot of things just the good and the pleasing will it wasn't god's perfect will he allowed my choices he allowed my will under his good and pleasing will but i he asked me one day i want you to look at this he actually said it in a little bit different way he said i want you to trade with me make a heavenly trade with me trade with me those times you operated in my good and my pleasing will and i'll give you my perfect will and I looked at one of my moves here in Destin. I, this is actually the third time I've been here. And I looked at my moves and the last time I was here was just his pleasing will. He allowed me to come to Destin to, to bring me to this point where I would be delivered from the good and pleasing will of the Father so that I would be only moving according to his perfect will. It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> that was almost devastating. I go, it was really more devastating in the natural because nothing had grace and favor on what I was doing that second time I was here in Destin. So it wasn't number one, it wasn't written on his scroll. It wasn't on his blueprint. So there was no grace and favor on it. And so all of a sudden he said, I want you to trade with me. And all of a sudden now I only want his perfect will in my life. I don't want to operate in his good and his pleasing will or what he allows. I want to be in his perfect, perfect will. I like those drawings you're doing. That's cool. <laughs> Whoever's doing that. Thank you. But isn't it amazing? We can take that. I want you to download that, that and put it up on your mirror, put it up on your, on your desk and, and begin to search me. Oh God, begin to ask the Lord, uh, see, inquire of the Lord, which gate, is 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 uh shut each which gate has a dragon sitting on it that's caused that gateway to be uh shut closed or maybe just a trickle out of there uh i'm a worshiper that wasn't any problem for me i'm a drummer i love worship i love well i love, love worship but maybe some of you have lost hope maybe some of you are having trouble uh moving by faith Maybe of you like me, you didn't, you didn't have, you didn't understand imagination. Your reason, you know, I came out of, uh, for 15 years, I was a uh, nuclear mechanical engineer. So my logic and reason was, 
was what controlled most of my life, most of my action, most of everything I did. If I couldn't reason it out, uh, it wasn't, I didn't do it. I couldn't move by faith because I was so caught in this engineering mindset that, that that's the way, that's what ruled my life. And so there was a major uh, dragon sitting on that, on that gateway right there that I had to deal with. And so uh, get that and begin to look at it. Everything should come out of the glory of God, out of the gate of first love, out of that father-son relationship with him so that it begins to flow more effectively and affect your worship, affect your revelation, the intuition, the fear of God, reverence, faith. And then it flows out to your, to your soul, to the logic and reason. You're, you make your decisions from the glory of God and, and your imagination, the conscious and the subconscious and the conscious realms, the emotions and the choice and the wills are all controlled by, from, from the glory of God. Uh, the, as you're seated with Jesus, uh, uh, on the throne, you'll discover, uh, you'll come back into divine order as we're intended to be. Can you, um, uh, can you define what the unconscious mind is, please? Uh, <clears throat> well, there was a, there, uh, I don't know, maybe somebody can do that better than I can. But uh, there is a parallel uh, thought. You're muted. We cannot hear you. There. I'm sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, I don't know. You know, maybe somebody is, is better understanding the consciousness and subconsciousness and things like that. Uh, but I look at it as unconscious. We don't actively think about that. Subconsciousness is, is kind of parallel with that. And uh, conscious realms were maybe an overthinker, maybe we're, 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 we're like we begin to do the courtrooms of heaven. And the beginning with me it was, it was, I was unconscious. I didn't understand the courtrooms of heaven. So I had to go by the book more or less. And now I can kind of, uh, I, I, I'm trained in there. I'm equipped in there. I'm experienced in the courtrooms of heaven. Now it's kind of an unconscious consciousness where I can just go into the courtrooms of heaven I don't have to follow the steps. I don't have to follow the protocols or I do, but it's an unconscious knowing that, that I can move into, to, to those realms. Yeah. 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 She can do that. I wish she was here. Billy Landers, a good friend. I uh, found it on Google. It says that a subconscious, um, an example of, of, of subconsciousness are our memories, beliefs, fears, subjective maps, maps of reality. So it's memories, beliefs, subconsciously. Okay. Okay. Subconscious minds. Okay. So memories. I think about the DNA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What Tara, else? I really thank you for tonight because for the last four, last couple of days, that's what I've been at the gate of my first love. And the Lord said, I want to go back. I want you to go back to the gates, to the gateways. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I've been meditating that all day, and for that's for you to come on, and it's just a confirmation that uh, I'm moving in the right way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's good, and we all are. We're all. Yeah. God is uh, uh, shaking us, you know, so that we become who He's created us to be, and uh, do what He's created us to do, and He's He's. He's trying all of us. We're all, I just feel like we're all in a court with him and he's loving us through the process. But he's challenging every, everything about us. He, he's weighing us in the courts. He's, he's, he's taking us in so that we can become who he created us to be. So I think it's a wonderful, wonderful time. Anybody else have any input?
We good? I'm good. Squirrely. I have another question. Okay. Like, I think I have more questions than answers, but yeah. just one more. Um, I was praying and God was showing me a little bit about the door, like the, um, all what we were teaching and um, especially the door, the doors of the spirit. And I don't know if there are some kind of guardians or whenever we clean them up, we need to set up guards in them. Um, I don't know because I felt that God told me to put the seven spirits on the gates of my spirit. But I don't, I'm, as I told, I'm really new on this and I don't understand a lot of what I'm doing. I'm just following orders. Um, but I just went from the spirit once. I don't know how you do that from the body getaways and the soul getaways. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a great question because that's how I approach God a lot of times. And I just begin to I'm an explorer and I'm a searcher. I'm a researcher and I begin to not only research in books, but I begin to seek him. And I think one thing that we're missing in the body of Christ is an inquire of the Lord. We want to inquire of other people. Maybe somebody that's wrote a book, maybe somebody that's, that has uh, uh, a little knowledge or experience. And there's wisdom in a multitude of counsel, but we've kind of neglected the, 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 what David was all about and inquiring of the Lord. He was quick to inquire of the Lord. And that goes back to the scripture I shared earlier is it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of Kings to search it out. Well, that can be an inquiring of the Lord. Uh, uh, if you're not getting the answer from men that you trust and they're in a relationship, women that you're in a relationship with, uh, because a lot of this stuff we're moving into today is, you know, some of the things that three you're experiencing, you know, you, you go to a lot of, a lot of spiritual leaders. They're not going to have any idea what, what you're talking about. They're going to say, you're weird, you're wacky, you need deliverance, <laughs> and, you know? So you need to go to Yahweh first. You need to go him to inquire of the Lord. What are you saying to me? What are you? Uh, it's going to be different to you than probably anybody else on the face of the planet. So I always, in every courtroom teaching, uh, and just about every webinar I teach that, uh, you know, it's not a, uh, a, uh, a performance based, uh, uh, mentality in the courtrooms of heaven in our life. It's a relational based, uh, experience that we need to go there first and protocols and guidelines are wonderful. I always start there, but every court case, everything in my life is from the flow, from the gate of the first love to flow and move with the Holy Spirit because in him, I live and move and have my being. He can take me anywhere I want to. And I've been being trained. I'm not perfect at it, but I'm, I'm, he's training me. Enoch is training me, mentoring me to experience everything uh, in a new way, like I believe what is significant for today is uh, the, perf the word that says we're, we're moving into a time of what no eye has seen, no ear heard, or mind conceived the thing that he's planned for those who love him. So you're not going to be able to go to somebody trapped in the religious system to explain to you what's going on because they haven't seen it. You haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. It's going to have to come from a father-son relationship with, with God himself. And so that's a huge, huge thing about this move we're in. He's sending Enoch. He's sending Elijah. He's sending Moses to us. And, you know, various different people, angels, to begin to, to train us and equip us for, to, to, to move into what no eye has seen, ear heard, or mind could see. So it's an incredible time. Uh, so just enjoy, you know, what, what, uh, a great place to be is, a, is a seat of rest and all that in peace and, uh, don't get in a hurry so much, but I always like to, I like to search the matter out and from a peace, a seat of rest, you'll not be frustrated. You'll not, you'll take things as they come. It's like, 
I wish I saw Enoch every day. I wish I'd see him face to face, and I think I will in the days we come to come, but I haven't yet so much. I want to sit down face to face with God and have him speak to me audibly in my in my home. I want to go up to heaven and sit at his throne. And who says I can't? You know, but but I need to train myself for that. Uh, I need to equip myself for that by all opening up all those gateways to begin to to uh, sense uh, what's going on around me. And uh, I guarantee you, Enoch, Elijah, and Moses really have something to say and teach you and impart to you for what's what your uh, 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 what's on your scroll. So. Thank you, Terry. Um, and really, you have been an answer to a lot of prayers because I didn't know what was going on with me. And I thought I was going to drive myself crazy <laughs> with all these things that were coming up to my mind. But thank you because you have been, with your teachings without knowing, you have been guiding me a little bit about what is going okay. on. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for listening. It's an honor. Terry, uh, can I ask a couple of questions real quick? Sure. Okay, so when you say that, you know, ask it, the angel's name and stuff like that when, they, when they're in my room, you know what I'm saying? I really didn't see it, but I, I could feel the presence. Um, but I'm not getting any names yet, so, so just keep asking and seeking, like you're saying. Inquire the Lord. And yeah. also, also, I wanted to share with you, not, you know, sometimes I'm like, Lord, do I share with everybody? Because, you know, I don't want, you know, how, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But anyways, a few months ago, the Lord told me right in my ear, he said, tectonic plates. And I said, tectonic plates? I said, are we going to have an earthquake? And two days later, we had an earthquake. And I, when we had the earthquake, the Lord spoke in my ear again, and he said, tectonic plates. And to me, this is kind of like, wow, over the top, Lord. So, you know, then he told me how to pray and, and, uh, do a few things to like you settle the earth so to speak mm -hmm. now, i didn't have a courtroom or anything but this has happened just a few months ago and now he's led me to study with you so i know there's a coincidence there's not a coincidence in hebrew there's no uh, a word for coincidence right? <laughs> yeah, right so i don't know what's your thought on that i mean i did, like i said didn't really have anybody else to, to pray with me or anything i just kind of yeah. the lord i couldn't i i was like it threw me back like to hear the Lord say that, and then a couple of days later, the, the earth shook. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's an amazing revelation, number one, and that God chose uh, to give it to you for a reason. Yeah. What right. am I going to do with it? You know, there's a lot of prophetic words going on. I grew up in the prophetic, apostolic prophetic moves of God. There's a lot of people prophesying gloom and doom and destruction from the second heaven, but what has to happen out of that, I'm a little frustrated with the prophetic movement right now. I turned off Elijah list. I talk, turned off all the, the email list from the major prophets. I don't listen to them anymore. I've been in a season to come away with me so I can know the truth and what I need to do. With it. So there was, a, there was a prophetic word the other day from this lady who's very prophetic. She said, there's a major earthquake, a major earthquake coming. That's it? You know, uh, you know, that's probably from the second heaven. Uh, to me, a, a prophetic words, if you got tectonic place, uh, this lady had an earthquake. Well, it doesn't excite me too much. I'm not going to listen to you if you're just going to say there's an earthquake or there's going to be a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. Anybody can prophesy that, right? Sure. So what I'm looking for is a Jeremiah uh, 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 prophetic word. Jeremiah did, he, he was rooting out, overthrowing, tearing down, and destroying. He was prophesying bad stuff, but he was also given the blueprint to build and to plant. Now, if we have courtrooms of heaven, I believe God is going to restructure the prophetic and the apostolic, the fivefold ministry, because the suns are rising on the scene. Now we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get those prophetic sensings. And he's going to show us either how his purpose, but why he's allowing it, maybe to expose iniquity in the land uh, and how to go about uh, deliverance in that or avoiding that particular issue if we can. 
you know, we, in the past, we got, there's an earthquake coming, you know, I'm going to, or, or a hurricane or a tornado coming. I'm going to go out and stand in front of it and hold my hands out, yell and scream at the enemy and bind and loose. And well, maybe that didn't work. Maybe it's worked at a limited level, but now the prophetic has to, has to begin to grow and mature into how do we take this revelation and go beyond what we've seen and how to minister that to the body of the body of Christ so that we can move in a class action suit to totally eliminate or discover God's purpose in what he's doing. And so uh, it, it's an amazing thing uh, and partly why I've turned off the prophetic voices. I want to know, uh, you know, just for an example, Timothy Bentz and I were touring Florida and one of the mandates that the Lord gave us for uh, Florida was to tour the state and set up governmental control centers over hurricanes. And Dorian was coming in town and uh, during the time we were there and we had one set up in Jacksonville and they kind of orchestrated the whole court deal. And we discovered that, that, uh, that a tornado or a hurricane will rest on iniquity on the land and that thing stalled out in the bahamas and we go why is this thing stalling in the bahamas and the weather forecasters in the natural had these spaghetti maps it was going they couldn't predict where it was going but it was coming in as a cat five massive destruction and the lord said that that or through a hurricane before that we took to the courts of heaven that we had to deal with the ancient slave trade routes coming from Afro Africa because they all, all of the hurricanes followed the ancient slave trade routes from Africa. Now this one, Dorian, was settled over, stalled over the Bahamas for days and wasn't moving. So why is, we had to inquire of the Lord, why is this hurricane stalled over the Bahamas. Well, we discovered that Epstein's Island is down in that area. And so not only did, did the Lord want us to deal with, with the ancient slave trade routes, but he also wanted us to deal with the modern slave trade, uh, trade routes coming from Epstein's Island and Africa and so forth. So instead of it just being a something evil we had to see we had to begin to look okay lord what are you revealing in this hurricane what are you revealing in this tornado what are you shaking in this earthquake rather than going out and just praying uh or you know standing in faith and trying to yell and scream it and bind and loose it uh we need yeah. to get another i didn't yeah i didn't do that but i mean i didn't share it with anybody because people are gonna think you're whacked you know what I'm saying? I just inquire to the Lord, like you said, because yeah. that's why, you know, certain things, not everybody's going to believe you. you're, you know, but yeah. I mean, I heard it clear as day and I'm like, what? And I, so, you know, that kind of like threw me back, like, okay, Lord, what are you trying to, you know, yeah. teach me or you're warning me that there's an earthquake coming, but I'm not going to tell the world. I'm not going to get out there and be some loud mouth yeah. and say, Hey, this is what the Lord said. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now you can <laughs> take that thing and inquire of the Lord and find out, the root of everything that's going on, the iniquity, why it's, why it's happening, how we can take it down, uh, or does the Lord want this thing to, to roll? You know, we, we inquired of the Lord as a group with the, the admins for uh, 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 the race rides. And Lord said, don't touch it. And we were all ready to go. We were mighty right. ready. We were ready to go. He right. said, don't touch it. Well, I'm I think, I think, yeah. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. You said you can't. I don't want you to touch it in the courtrooms of heaven. Number one is uh, you have a bunch of unrighteous judgments going on. You're not going to be able to find a a uh, 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 what's the word? Uh, a witness that's impartial because yeah. they've already decided. They've already made these unrighteous judgments, and it's going to be what they think, and their court case will be what they think, and not what I think. And the result I wanted, you know, like you look at Strong's Concordance 2020, his purpose is deliverance. 
You know, right. that's just part of it. His preference is, is uh, right. revealed in the some earth. Of yeah, the earth grown and yeah, absolutely, you know. Yeah. But I, I, I'm thrilled that he connected me with you because you're knowledgeable in all this. And like I said, I didn't really have anybody that I could share it with at the time and, you know, pray about it or whatever. So, But, but now, you know, take it. Yeah. I will, yeah. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> that's good well we're here to learn we're here to you know i didn't yeah. know it and so i'm always i'm always uh, exploring i'm always inquiring of the lord to find out what's really behind the story right. and because we want to demonstrate and show how spiritual we are and go out and stand in the face of the oh. and rebuke it and, no and, not at all i just like it threw me back because the lord spoke it to me and then it actually happened yeah <laughs> you know yeah 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 so Dive in a little deeper next time he gives you something. He will, because he wants to entrust to uh, give that revelation to you. He, he's given you those things to train you and equip you for, for things in the future. And so, you right. know, back when I was in Reno, I, I was starting out in ministry, and I have these incredible glory-filled meetings. I, I go, I came out of the meetings, I said, Lord, show me what I did wrong. They were wonderful, but I was like, how could I improve? How could I be more in your will, in your perfect will? How could I do things according to your agenda, your blueprint, and not mine, what I think a meeting would look like? He said, tear up your notes. <laughs> Don't <prepare laughs> <a lesson. laughs> step in there. Right? And step in there and trust me. And we had some wild, wild meetings. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Well, thank you for taking a few minutes because like I said, it's been like stirred in my spirit. I'm like, should I share it? Lord, should I share it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, like yeah. It. You know, it's good. You're in a bunch of people that you can share stuff like that with. Right. And uh, in the future, if we need to do a court case with it, you know, that's why we're here, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to govern creation. And so right. you're, you're, you're in a safe place. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Belinda, Belinda has her thumb up or just saying, do you have something you want to share, Belinda? Or just saying thumbs up. Anyway, <laughs> that's an hour and a half already. Squirrely Robinson said it's time to go to bed. <laughs> Squirrely Davidson, I'm sorry. There he is. There's Squirrely. Anyway, appreciate you guys coming on short notice and go for it, you know, inquire of the Lord, be his son, seek him, inquire of him and uh, uh, practice, practice, practice uh, strong concordance numbers. Just step in by faith, believe in you can get numbers too. believe you can get colors, believe you can get smells and watch what God will do. He'll start giving them to you and then he'll start showing you even greater things so that you may marvel. And so uh, share your testimonies with me, and uh, uh, I'm excited for you. Thank so. you. Thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. Good night. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you.